Hello, everybody. I guess you are joining in line now. I'm uh, here in San Diego traveling and uh, I contribute and participate into an amazing workshop called uh, Impact the World. So how uh, Amrit Nam Sarovar can be uh, in the concert of uh, impacting the change and people and helping uh, transform this planet. So uh, we're gonna tune in, put our palm together as traditionally we do. Close your eyes. <clears throat> Inhale deep. Exhale. In order to open this planetary space. Om Namo Guru De Namo Om To God, Guru Nami, Sad Guru Nami, Siri Guru Dev Nami, Ad Guru Nami, To God, Guru Nami, Sad Guru Nami, Siri Guru Dev Nami, Ad Guru Nami, To God, Guru Nami, Sad Guru Nami, Siri Guru Dev Nami. Say once more, good morning. I don't know, maybe good evening for you. Yeah, this is the morning here in San Diego. So welcome for those who first time joined to Kata Time. Uh, this is uh, a format uh, I wanted to install this year for my first New Year uh, intention. Uh, to be with you and honor all the people that uh, in the past, I have touched and then be touched with Kundalini Yoga. They are uh, in their uh, localization, uh, developing, practicing, and swimming themselves in the big ocean <clears throat> by themselves. And I try to uh, support, inspire, and connect all of you, and more uh, specifically, uh, honor the work you're doing, the practice you're doing with yourself and with the people around you. So let's connect us all uh, for the new world. Uh, I guess uh, we used to say Aquarian Edge will be the edge of uh, information. I think already that is obsolete. <clears throat> the change and transformational change is happening so fast that we're already now in the age of transformation and not just information. So this is uh, 36 years and more that I've been traveling uh, the world and especially uh, carrying this, uh, transferring the experience of Kundalini Yoga through a format called uh, Kundalini Soma, <clears throat> which is like a Soma Tantra is a uh, special event. And we have been uh, carrying this through the east part of uh, Europe until uh, Russia, the north and the south until Africa, and the west until South America. Uh, this is an amazing format where people uh, can experience uh, diving into their uh, own darkness and uh, bring them into the light to be resolved. 
So these are my passion and this is a practice I, I love to share with you all. And uh, it brings us into this Tantra Lila, what is life as a, as a game and not as a drama. So the whole planet, uh, humanity on the planet is now uh, changing uh, the level of frequency and we all need to tune in with this change. Uh, and that's where we find uh, resistance, uh, uh, desperation, uh, depression, uh, anxiety, and a, a whole lot of fears coming up. So uh, I want to share with you the update of the Kundalini energy and how it has changed since the 36 years where the message uh, has been uh, crystallized in the past and how today our option is uh, can we update this message? What do they mean today and what it means today to uh, work on the path of uh, awakening of Kundalini? So this is the second axe is uh, in, on the top of impacting where I'm traveling is to uh, keep opening the access to a new understanding and how can we apply in the context of the life today so uh, we wanted to answer your call and be uh, accurate with your needs more than to deliver our message uh, in one uh, one way business so by the way we each time uh, have this carta time we invite you previously to send your question and burning question or issues where i could uh, uh, use this to address and how can the practice help you to uh, solve your point. So I will ask now uh, Arnal to introduce, uh, we had many, many questions. Uh, this is uh, the, third, the third card at time and we had a whole lot of questions and those who feel they have not been answered yet, uh, just relax. Uh, we are uh, really working on it consciously and we want to extract from that all the substance we could share with you to help you going through and find, uh, find a way out uh, of your questioning mind. <clears throat> so Arnal, would you be so kind to read? Uh, we have selected five very meaningful questions for the time and uh, I will answer that globally uh, uh, afterwards. So <clears throat> could you okay. do that? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. So the first one was from Elke Bogner, and the question is, why is the soul manifested so late um, at 26? And then what happens if the soul doesn't get manifested or, or anchored? The next question was from Martha Lettinger. Sorry for my pronunciation. What is the best way to let my self-esteem grow? <laughs> and we have a question from Victoria Milton. What are the most effective ways to use the breath in these times? What specific pranayam would you recommend? And why specifically these over others? And there is a question from Arvinda Gruel, that man. How do we honor the changing nature of the Guru Chela relationship in the age of Aquarius, given that the traditional model of student teacher has now changed to be your own teacher? Do you think there is an ironic subculture of elitism and cliques? within the yogic community in the West. Given that Yogi Bhajan broke away from the elitist hierarchy of the East. If so, do we risk creating a new caste system in the West based on those who perceive themselves to be the teachers of the age of Aquarius and some students whose path is simply to be? And the last question is from Alicia Cassini. Um, recur, re, recurring 
issue regarding communication when dealing with others within common projects. <coughs> Telling the truth and risking the consequences of being ousted if people are not ready. Or navigating diplomatically and learning to compromise in favour of meeting people where they are so you can stay involved. What do you advise in this delicate game of combining your vision of truth versus compromising for others? <clears throat> Those are all the questions. So, thank you. Thank you so much. I think this is uh, giving us a, a, a frame and an orientation on uh, the address of today. So, uh, this is showing how uh, the urge on the planet has uh, shifted radically. 40 years ago, we were told, uh, produce teachers, the world is asking for teachers because the big masters uh, traditionally that spiritual hierarchy was fading away and slowly, slowly disappearing from the planet. And we needed to replace that with uh, thousands and hundreds of people who will uh, endorse and take uh, responsibility for the teaching, own them, process them through them, and deliver them. But we had for that a sort of a, a format, a projective image of what should be a teacher. So that was these two things, a uh, projected image of a teacher and uh, producing massively teachers around the planet. I think that's what I contribute and dedicate my life all these years. And uh, teachers now on many, many yogic families have been doing the same, which will end up having yoga clubs every corner, uh, a multiplicity of uh, amazing uh, yogic practice uh, with each one is on uh, uniqueness and uh, which make uh, one of the biggest market, uh, business market uh, today. So because it turned into uh, a market, a marketplace. So uh, where are we today? Um, what is, um, what is the, the motto today? So I was following this uh, role model of uh, teachers with a projected uh, image, which was basically, if you're not up to the caliber of what is a true teacher, then fake it and eventually you will make it. And we all did that very innocently, uh, giving us uh, the protection, the umbrella of a big master who covering our mistakes and we will, uh, we will fake it uh, as good as we could. So what that methodology brought up is that uh, at least for myself personally, uh, fake it will brought, brought me to this uh, fuck it up. Uh, ignoring uh, or pretending ignoring that your darkness are gone because you dress up and you project the light and you represent the teachers and everything would not necessarily uh, bring you to the pressure to transform your darkness, to see your darkness, and rather being busy by helping others uh, somehow to do like you were doing, which mostly cover your darkness and walk into the light. So uh, my loop was going through a self-initiation process where at the end, uh, pressure was almost uh, unbearable and I had to crack the cocoon in which I was protected and safe. Uh, I would say cooking my darkness uh, very much inside and not let them come out and dissolve and resolve. So I went through this amazing process of uh, self-transformation. This is like the after 2012, where actually really the, the world turned the page and it has never been ever like before since then. 
and uh, I could uh, finally embrace and see my darkness outside of myself really accurately and uh, finally embrace and resolve uh, all that karma that has not been treated for 36 years by covering, uh, pretending that I was serving the planet. So I guess, honestly, uh, my intention was absolutely pure and I did serve the planet and I did serve the transformation and the, the coming of the Aquarian Age. That was my intention and that never changed. But meanwhile, I had to purify, to transform and upgrade my uh, level of frequency. So today for me, the message uh, doesn't fit anymore. Uh, time to fake it is gone. Otherwise, you're going to fuck it up. And this is the only thing we can do today. The, the acceleration and humanity needs people who are true, authentic, and open to the love so which is nothing to do with covering projecting and delivering content so the school which we call amritnam sarovar is not an institution we are not and we will not become an institution yoga is coming from the akashic record teachings are descending constantly and we just need to be a sarova, that's the meaning of our school. A sarova, this is a, a, a container that receives uh, the uh, teachings as uh, accurate in the time. That's why I call it Karta Time, which is what are uh, the teaching today. So, um, how much are you ready to stop playing games? to discriminate between you projecting spiritual and consider everyone in the street as the first most precious spiritual person in the world. I think that's where we are today. Uh, the world is spiritual from the bottom line. We are not becoming spiritual. And it's not because you dress up and project images that are not you, that you're going to show up more spirituality. And by discriminating those who are right from those who are wrong, this has never been the path of yoga. So I think we are definitely not uh, taking that axis at all. We want to serve the people who are coming honestly, facing the necessity and the pressure of time to transform physically. This is a very big point is transformation is not only in the mind, is not only how we are going through our emotion, but definitely how our physical body can change the level of resonance and frequency so we can channelize, we can receive more of the new frequencies. And the inspiration and the guidance each one of us need to follow his own path. So it's a time as we are just going through this full moon of the Baisaki, which is the Bezak, uh, the combination of uh, truth and love together, that's what it means. It is a, a moment where unconditional love and truth manifest exactly together to open your space and fill up your inspiration with new determination, with rehabilitation of your shame, and uh, walk tall again, giving up your head, your definition, your projection, and trust that the level of frequency within your physical body will attract the new quality that we are, the world is expecting from you to manifest. So that's what I mean by self-empowerment, is that uh, allow the frequency within your body to raise so you will attract uh, new people. First of all, we are a collective body and we are inspiring each other and elevating each other because we meet, because we are open up, we are open up to receive others' people impact, others' people frequency. 
and those you will attract in your surrounding are directly connected to your level of frequency. So uh, you need to rehabilitate your kindness and to raise your frequency within the physical body to attract and move in a network of synchronicity where you attract people who help you to raise, help you to elevate yourself by just mutual inspiration. Be straight the way you are is absolutely necessary. We need each of you to manifest fully who you are with everything you are, not just the good part of you. Be authentic and get out of your fear to manifest who you are because there will be no negative consequences. It's just the opposite. We are entering an age of transparency where your darkness are, are just scaring you, but nobody else because everybody else sees it. Each of us, each of us is gifted. What is our gift? Our gift is leaning off a bench of values that are timeless. Values, what are values? Values are not based on judgment and comparison. Values are timeless thought, like joy, like courage. These, we used to call it angels. These are spiritual entities that has no bodies. They have no incarnation others than come through your psychic and manifest through your action. This is what angels are. This is what devas are. They are living in our etheric space. They are filling up the void in what we call chitta. This is this universal mind through the quality of buddhi, which is inclusive. Each of us is included in the buddhi mind. We, each of us can receive inspiration and decide consciously to adopt one of these values, three, four, let's say five, like our tadvas. Each of your tadvas needs a key value that you adopt for yourself and that will your delivery will be based on these timeless values and that will be your gift this is your unique choice of a combination of values that you stand for and that you manifest through your action and that will unfold into manifesting your gift we need everyone today to manifest your very unique gift, which is your unique combination of values that you need to stand for, you need to choose by yourself. Nobody will tell you it doesn't come from a belief system, it doesn't come from a religion, it doesn't come from any books, it doesn't come from any system, it just comes from your heart. Within the temple of your heart with the innocence of your child in a child you need to choose and be responsible for your choice of values you want to live by that is a first step in self-empowerment and in manifesting the new the new will be timeless the new will not be bound to localization of specific uh, conjuncture because the conjuncture outside of, of us is already a consequence of hundreds of years before, and this we can change. What consequence will be on the climates, on the planet, it's a very slow process, and we will face what we have to face as a consequence of the evolution of this planet. But who you are today and who you can manifest today to anchor the future and to prepare the future to land, this is what we can do today. Manifest your gift and we will help the planet to move into this aquanage, uh, the age of 
transformation of the total humanity in all direction, in all frequencies. Now, your values are your choice. And your values are unique. And the combination of, if let's say you choose five key values that are priority for you, that you are the one who can deliver that combination. Definitely, your partner, your colleague in your work, in your enterprise and, and, and business will not have the same. And we don't have to have the same values. The congruence of values is something very, very important to consider in the co-creation. I guess we are entering a context now where the synergy is a uh, totally opposite to the competition time. Synergy means you have a unique combination and a unique gift to manifest that totally complementary to my own choice, my own nature, and my own gift. So when you add a gift to a gift, you multiply by 10 the possibilities of attraction, the manifestation, that can unfold. And the age of Aquarius is the age of collaboration, co-creation, not dependency and hierarchy. So we need to go beyond what is so important for us, what is so dear and so unique for us, and to see how the other one can manifest a value system that is different than mine, but complemented. And when we open up to that complementarity and collaboration, then we're not judging the other one for his choices, but we're adding to our own choices, timeless values and expand our field of manifestation. So this we are still time to learn about how to co-create, how to put our values and respect that the other one doesn't have the same value as you, but they're still timeless. They are still gold because these are the foundation of the uniqueness of your partner. So if you, let's say, you are a family person that wants to have kids and stability in your life and all that, and your value is stability. And then you have a partner that his value, very dear value, is adventure, risk. Do you understand that you may have a moment <laughs> of, of contradiction because his timeless value are not going on the same orbit as yours? If you want stability, the other one wants adventure. You have a moment you need to open up to a great space of tolerance and decide, should I co-create with somebody who is a risk taker and adventurer, or should I look for more stability and other type of values that fits with my domain and gifts? But you will not convince adventurer to stop taking risk because this will not be his value system. So I think we are moving into now honoring each of us with our differences that are highly valuable. And how can we choose consciously to collaborate and attract people who are not so extremely different, but let's say closely complemented. And this is not segregation. This is not uh, judgmental and say, oh, this guy is doing this uh, is wrong. That nobody, nobody can be wrong when he manifests his gift. Nobody can be right because he has his value system predominant. We need to open up to share values but we need to also 
be alert and conscious that some values are just going different axes. As we know, the wheel of manifestation in the space have eight directions. This is a foundation of our teaching in our school that if you go to the south or go to the north, it will be a total different bunch of values of uh, frequency and uh, feelings. So we need to respect that. We need to be alert of our differences and our uniqueness. And we need to now start to uh, develop that intuition and be straight in our communication so the other one can unveil its true values and priorities. And it's not a problem. We don't have to collaborate with everybody. We don't have to collaborate forever. But time-wise and for a, a, for a time given, we may need unique gift and capacity of some people where we need to collaborate with at that time and it might not be the case forever so the the flow in the aquarian age of interconnectedness the flow of relationship and the flow of creativity are very very linked we cannot stop our creativity to please somebody else because his values are different this is not how we manifest the new each one has to search, assume, be responsible for his choices and not to hide. The beauty of who you are, everybody sees it. The beauty of your uniqueness and your gift, everybody sees it. If you don't know what is your gift, if you are uncertain or shaking or doubting or shame, just ask around you how other people sees you in your best expression. What is your gift is known from everybody. As much as what are your darkness? You may hide it from yourself, but today in the age of transparency, everybody sees it. You just need to open the space and be straight in your communication so people will share honestly. That's what we all need from each other. What we call in the Lila game, the good company, is that people are honest, straight, and mirror you directly. What are your gifts? What are your values that even yourself sometimes are afraid that you have? And then you can embrace them consciously and choose and decide, this is me, and this is really, really me. And what are your darkness? And also says, this is with me and I'm ready to resolve. Yeah. So the mutual collaboration and co-creation is going through that first step of authentic communication of your gift, your priority, your values. So you can manifest that gift fully and it is welcomed by others and not judge, compare or undermine which was the time in the peace and age where we used to have my value predominate on yours my choice are priority and then you have to align yourself on me so this is this is finished this time is gone so do not compare with others if you want to really know and empower your own gift do not compare because the gift of another one is as good as yours it's just manifest in another axis, in another orbit, in a different domain. But they're all welcome. And we need each of us. Remember that. The world needs each of us, not to be the same, and but to be responsible for our choices. That is about self-empowerment. Now, you will definitely find people who judge you, wants to undermine your choices, or pretend that your choice are based on limitation. You can discriminate for yourself and you do not have to take the judgment of others. That judgment you can listen as a constructive feedback about how in spite of your timeless value, you still limit yourself and this can happen and you may be not aware of that, which is a fair feedback and this you decide 
what you want to take from that feedback. But when people go from judgmental comparison about your choices, then you have full right to say, no way, I'm not taking this. So uh, this is where we are going, honoring our self that we give birth by deciding about our value combination that are fundamentals for us to manifest our gift. That was one of the strongest message I wanted to convey through that part of time. Stop faking it or you will fuck it up and time is too late to fuck it up. This was before 2012. Today is the time to make it and to make it not by conquering, but just assuming your choice and manifest your gift because you are welcome. So uh, for the Kundalini uh, practice now, and how can we enhance this capacity to choose our values and how to decide to manifest our values and gifts? into our creation, we need to relax. <laughs> this is the good news. We need to relax. This is, uh, I think, one of the value of the warrior that constantly position himself on bringing the light bringing compassion and love wherever there is despair and depression, you need time to integrate. You need time to bring your rhythm and frequency into a balanced and harmonious stage. So through your physical body, you can still resonate. You can still bring your frequency into a level of feelings where you feel on creative passionate how we do that in the practice of kundalini yoga as we follow the eight limbs of patanjali one of these limbs is about pranayama and there was one question about that we need to start the day with a strong cleansing and activation of our prana and apana function. We are a society of consumers. The whole direction of the collective psychic is take, 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 take. We never have enough. Increase the taking. So the market is duplicating. So it's a society of consumer, and we are very good at accumulating, taking, piling, storaging, but we're not letting go. We don't know how to recycle the uh, atomic uh, transformation of energy, and then we produce all this garbage. We're producing tons of garbage every day that we are not able to transform. And there are garbage more and more difficult to be able to transform. So this is apana. Collectively, apana is dysfunctional. Personally, it's the same. Personally, we run, run, take, 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 take. We never take the time to let go, let transform and eliminate what we don't need. So for me, uh, the pranayama that is predominant that we should really focus today in this time is the balance of prana and apana. Prana, which is also uh, expanding our capacity to assimilate more vitality, and apana to eliminate the ama, which is like the storage of useless energy. So, I would start the day with a practice of uh, Noli Sodana, the cleansing of the two big channel, Ida Pingala channel, which is how we can uh, 
cleanse and open our channel, our central channel to receive more light and highest frequency. So it's uh, quite simple to lock your right nostril with the thumbs and use the pinky to lock the left nostril. The three of the fingers like antenna are looking toward the heaven and represent transcending the time, past, present and future. And you start inhaling through the left nostril very deeply. Open the channel, lock with the pinky and exhale to the right nostril. Then inhale to the right nostril, locked it and exhale to the left. So this is a very, very basic classic uh, cleansing pranayama to cleanse the two big nadis and to open up, open the nadi. We need to do that for about seven minutes, very consciously closing your eyes and using long, deep breath. Uh, so the breath will go from the lower stomach, the belly, the rib cage all the way up to the collar bones. And then to exhale, you inhale a little bit before you exhale, and then let go the other way around from the collar bones, the chest, the stomach area, and all the way down to the pubis. This is long, deep inhale and exhale to cleanse your channel before you're gonna activate prana and apana. When you've done that practice for about uh, seven minutes, I would advise now to do uh, this other pranayama based on eight stroke, which will really systematically help you to fill up your full capacity on the inhale and therefore reverse on the exhale and exhale the full capacity of your breath out. The mudra, it's to open the heart. So I will introduce the practice of self-empowerment, which is uh, the power of trusting and loving yourself and resonate that frequency all around you by neutralizing the forces of light and love, the Ida and Pingala, the sun and the moon, and instead of having them contradictory, having them in synergy, in dynamic, on the level of your heart chakra. So practically what it means is if you take your right hand and left hand, where the wrists are in line with the forearms, both sides, and you're going to click and press your wrist against each other, on the exact level of your heart chakra. When you press these two against each other, you generate an energy system that is accelerating the frequency on the level of your heart chakra and open the door of the heart. So I guide you the introduction. This practice should be held for 22 minutes, two times 11, with a very a deep uh, presence of yourself within the breath. So we're gonna use it, we're gonna use it, the satanama in silence, anahata. That means production of sound within the mind, within the body, without uh, outside sound. And you know the practice of satanama, which has uh, been deeply studied and the effects are absolutely amazing on the brain and on the glandular system and on the nervous system. So you can visualize and you must visualize entering each uh, consonant like sa, ta, na, ma. So the sound is coming from the sasra, top, top of your head, and coming out through the third eye, which is the point in between the brow, somewhere there. 
and you will feel the gland, the hypothalamus inside, just behind your third eye. This is mentally repeated to give you two times satanama, the eighth stroke of your inhaling, and two times satanama, eighth stroke on the exhaling. This breath will be for you like to be a, a yo-yo, coming up the wave, coming down the wave, coming up the wave, coming down the wave, constantly and never stopping this movement of the breath. Inhaling eight stroke with visualization and sounding sa, ta, na, ma, sa, ta, na, ma. Two times on the inhale, and the same, a little bit in a, and exhale. Sa, ta, na, ma, sa, ta, na, ma. Exhale in eight steps. Inhale in eight steps. So I recapitulate the whole practice. You bring your, make your fist, forearms together horizontal on the level of your heart chakra, which is where you have this little curve in the, in the sternum bones, the chest bone here, and you compress and press against each other your two forearms. And then you're gonna exhale completely, close your eyes, and I will guide you how you open up the space before you start the pranayama. So maybe I invite each of you now to just Relax, prepare yourself for the practice, and close your eyes. Close your eyes, breathe nicely, deeply relax. Remember, we do this practice to relax ourselves, to relax our physical body, our nervous system, our glandular system, in order to raise our frequency of authenticity, values and timeless qualities. So you dive into the heart chakra temple, which is in the middle of your chest somewhere, a feeling, and I want you to really open up to feel within your heart chakra temple. Feel your presence and feel especially the original self. This is like a big smile. You know when you have done a big joke that everybody enjoy it and there is this big release in the room around you? That's where you are. This little child with innocent laughter that is just, just enjoying the lila, the game of life. Because you abandon the idea of being composed, being playing games, impressing people, projecting images, but you rather enter the simplicity of your heart with a big smile and the smile to the life itself. So you find this rejoiceful place inside your heart and you start breathing long and deep in the temple of your heart, connecting with your smiling self, we call it Ananda, the innocent humor, the innocent child, smiling. And this is the energy you want to expand. That is the source where you will be inspiring yourself. That is the source of the frequency that will now start pulsing, intensified, rising within you and all around you. And you're gonna put your arms together, the forearms together, make a fist, keep your spine straight, your chin in, keep your eyes closed, and you slowly exhale, 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 and now we start. So. You were inhaling, hold breath, and slowly exhaling.
Okay, I will stop the practice right now. I just wanted to transfer to you that practice that hopefully you will do for 22 minutes every morning or several times through the day if you need it. Start by the cleansing your nadis, seven minutes, and then 22 minutes of satanama, twice pranayama, in LXL will balance Prana apana is two major flow of energy in you. The sweating, expelling, getting rid of stuff you don't need, and assimilation of the vitality and the pranic forces were coming from earth and from heaven, which is energy of light. So this is for me uh, the priority today to spend this. 30 minutes of pranayama about every day to balance and relax yourself before you enter the action time of the day. If you do kundalini practice like physical kriya, it's highly recommended to start with this pranayama before you do your kriya. You will see the results are definitely improved Uh, because your channel will be open and you start with a potency, a potential of prana and stimulation of apana this is ready before you activate all other parts of the body through the kriva. So this is uh, how we go in a new format of uh, sadhana practice where we want to introduce before the, the kriya Uh, a specific pranayama and that was one of your questions so for me this is kundalini update how can we use kundalini today in the world we have to be more uh, efficient and raise our frequency no matter what we are facing through the day uh, to finish this uh, karta time i just wanted to uh, invite you to practice this uh, self-empowerment kriya for, for until the next karta time, like at 30, 40 days. And uh, I wanted to uh, invite you to our summer course that we're going to do uh, in August, which is one is a, like this tantric combination where we have uh, 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 ladies practicing on their own and through so which is the woman of joy and parallel to that uh, a true man uh, teamwork where we go on tracking on the mountain and we'll have uh, this year a work very uh, intense and deep on our dark side of the man which is a dark retreat for more than 24 hours in a cave So that will be a very unique experience. When parallel to that, women will explore what is it the grace of God through their presence and through the women of joy. And one day we'll meet together at the end where we will share the healing energy of the mutual flow of men and women into this tantric celebration, uh, mutual healing. We also have this uh, amazing week which is called uh, Awakening of the Self, which is that uh, where you can meet with an oracle and you can understand what will be your next step, what will be the new priority for you so you can reorient your destiny, make the right choice to elevate your frequency and be creative in the world again. Find your axis of creativity and delivery yourself to the life to humanity to serve others and elevate yourself. So 
this is our time and this is the time where each of you in your own practice and determination is needed uh, <laughs> you are welcome uh, le martinet is glowing and uh, becoming beautifully now uh, with all the greens and the spring energy uh, we have remodeled the part that is around the, the fire and the haven place so we'll improve our facilities we have uh, fan fantastic domes now we can host 30 even more people indoor so you're all welcome with our new program of uh, um we call it uh, seva program which we have now specified more on our website so you can choose and ask if you want to contribute and come and participate to the program when you can immerse yourself in the practice as well as to serve and help us to grow so um this is where we are now so we don't need teachers who fits with the expected image and being spiritual, but we rather want people to be authentic, be themselves, and uh, becoming a catalyst of this planetary change. So uh, the school is growing, the school is expanding, not as an institution, definitely we don't want and we will never be an institution, but rather a space that we hold for the planetary transformation and for the service we can offer for that. Each of us is welcome. I want now that to close this uh, Carta time today from San Diego, where I continue to contribute to this workshop called Impact the World. And I want to share this with you that each of you can impact the world today. Why not today? <laughs> so see you in the next uh, Carta time and enjoy the full moon energy, which is still very strong and intense. Enjoy the, the Vaisaki, the giving up of all your concept and mental games. Come into the heart and share. Share your values. Satnam. Thank you everybody for your patience, your inspiration, your loyalty and we'll see each other again soon. Inhale deep, close your eyes, take your time to integrate. And inhale to close the space together. So Nam Sat Nam Sat Nam Thank you. Bless you all. Love you all. See you next time.